hello, hello, hello. Hopefully this should work. Let's just get our game fired up. What's up, guys? What? What? This is your first time in VR with me. I'm actually fully vlogging, so... The last time you saw this, or at least the trailer of the metaverse, you just saw hands, like the palms. But I've got full upper body inverse kinematics working. I'll explain what that means. But what is this podcast about? Or what is this this video cast about? I, you know, I used to have this thing called V-Time. It was just me speaking to a camera. But it can also mean virtual time. It can also mean Varun time. So here's my new body. This is the Unreal default uh, mesh. It's called the mannequin. But it's a little different in the sense that the entire upper body motion is being driven primarily by three points. Just give me a second. Primarily by three points. My head, which is my HMD. Uh, that's the head mounted display. My right controller and my left controller. So just with these three points, we are guessing where everything is, including the position of the elbows. And when I do a lot of different things. So I can do a lot of different things. And then the feet are just purely guesswork by me. So the upper body, you know, I try to build my own upper body inverse kinetics. Um, inverse kinematics. I used this paper by this guy called Matthias and that paper was used by Unity as well, Unity VR, to make their official inverse kinematic system. So if you play games like VR Chat, you'll see the upper body system is very similar and same issues that I've got too, right? So if you do this, you can see that sometimes the shoulder gets cut off when you try to do a Kamehameha type pose. Um, but then again, my lower body system is probably better than uh, VR Chats, in, in my opinion again. Uh, it's got a little bit of we got a little bit of work like the pelvis moves along with the body, so uh, but but some credits first. Uh, part of the upper body system is by this guy called uh, Jonas something I don't remember his last name, but he's the guy who made the Unreal version of the same uh, research paper. I think uh, without that I'd definitely be stuck. Uh, there are a few rotations that I was just getting completely wrong, and he just he his work was just the basis. Uh, for for a lot of this upper body stuff, the lower body is purely me. Uh, it's driven by, as you can see, you can bend and stuff. So there's, there's a little bit of bug when you enter the bending mode. I'll fix that a little later. There's a little bit of spaz, you can see. But I'm gonna fix that. Uh, but all of this stuff, you know, is me. One sec, my right hand is not in the view of my track tracker. But uh, you know, the lower body can do a lot of stuff. It's being fed the direction from the headset. Actually, what I'm doing is I'm calculating the speed from the headset, which is a vector, and then I'm normalizing it across the Z-plane, which is I'm taking the uh, Z-rotation, the yaw, as you would call it, and then I'm using that to calculate the direction. So based on that, I'm driving something called a bend, blend space. I don't know why I said bend space. It's blend space. So depending on how I'm running, whether left, right, whatever, it's a little different. I'm using the same animation for left and right. I'll change that later in a bit. But as you can see, if you go backwards and forwards, that looks good. So you have a full body and it works with jump. It works to a certain extent with crouch. Uh, you can crouch walk too. It looks strange, but uh, you know, I'm working on that. Uh, and you can do you know, fun stuff. So you can do like proper break dancing, beat your chest. There are some issues which I think is more of a, you know, a tracking issue. I'm just, I'm driving an entire body with just three points. Your body drives your body with a lot of different bones. Uh, but as you can see, you know, this is a small problem where it goes inside a mesh. And that's because to a certain extent, this person's body is a little bit bigger than mine. So I can't, you know, in real life, I feel nothing here. But uh, for him, there's the actual solid mass. I'm working on that. Uh, you know, all in all, I, I'm happy with where we are. And hopefully with more trackers. If I had trackers on your elbows, this would be piece of cake. If I had trackers on your knees, this would be a piece of cake. If I had trackers on your feet, that would be a piece of cake. So in our game, you can do everything. You can probably, you know, box. You can jump and box. You can dodge. You can, you can move your head. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but you can't play football. For example, I'm moving my leg right now, but you can't tell. You can't tell I'm moving my leg because I have no tracking information on them. Just the legs are pure guesswork. Intelligent guesswork. Calculated guesswork. So hopefully you guys will like your body uh, when you enter the metaverse. And this game is cross-compatible. I want it to be available on phones, on the Mac, on uh, what else? In VR, obviously. Uh, consoles, PlayStation, I don't know. I don't know. There's some licensing stuff there. But let me show you some of the other stuff. Join me. 
Um, so I've implemented this plugin for, so Unity actually comes with a lot of pre-built stuff and since this game, pre-built VR stuff and since this game is being built in Unreal, I either had to build it from scratch or use different plugins. Uh, the VR expansion plugin was a pain to implement but it's it's a good plugin for, for handling stuff like this so I can pick this up. So I'll tell you how the pickup works, right? So I'm doing a double trace. I'm doing a spherical trace. You can see this red trace here as well as a line trace. So if anything is either in the sphere trace or in the line trace, I pick it up. So I can pick that up via line trace or I can go closer and pick it up via sphere trace. And this thing, this paper bag has a mass. So so what I can do is, and, and it obeys the laws of gravity. It's, this is Newton compatible. I can put it in this bin. Let's pick up this bin. This bin doesn't have gravity. I've made it a freeze type of thing where I can just place it wherever you want. Uh, let's see. You know, if I use two hands, it's a little more stable. This is going to fall because of gravity. Uh, there's, there's some collision box issues here. So on that thing, so one second. The problem is I'm slightly outside my tracking area. So there's a little bit of stutter, but otherwise it's pretty smooth. Let's pick this third one up too. All right, this is good enough. So I packed Rachina's lunchbox and Let's go check out. So here you go. So let me pull this up a little bit. Here's one for you. Here's another one for you. And this is for you. Well, I like this freeze frame idea because I think that people are going to keep dropping their, I mean, I, here's what I want, right? I want you to be able to visit any store you want whether it be a food world or whatever you want, you can walk down the aisle, go to the shelves, pick up some stuff, put it in your basket. Then you go to the counter, place it there, just tap a button called checkout. And then what I do is I take money from the card that you put in the game. And I just, the next day at your house, you have groceries delivered. That's how cool this is going to be. So people say, you know, why, why won't people just go to the grocery store? Well, people are lazy. Uh, then you might say, well, why don't people just use an app? They can just open, you know, their phone and, and put in the items they want. Well, that's actually not how people use a grocery store. People like the experience of picking something up and putting it in, but they're also lazy to go out because there's traffic and stuff. So I've kind of, it's best of both worlds. You can sit at home and pick up whatever you want. Plus you might forget stuff, right? Like while walking, uh, maybe you want Surf Excel, right? So you might forget to put in Surf Excel because uh, on an app, it's just infinite scroll, but here you can go to maybe, that can be the deter detergent section. You put up just a particular detergent and put it inside your basket. So, and before leaving, maybe you can pick up the bread. You can see the ingredients, you can see the labels, you can see new items that you never knew you wanted. I don't know whether what I'm creating is, you know, going to revolutionize the world or just wasting everybody's time, but we'll find out soon. Then there's more. This is still a work in progress. You can pick up this chalk. You can see, you can manipulate the grips on the chalk and you can draw. Obviously I've put, given it some extra range and the textures are low resolution, but it works. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, I just need to fix the, the range on the chalk. Uh, it's, it's running out of trace line. You can't see the chalk's trace line, but, and, and I need to make sure that uh, the textures are smaller. It's a big square texture. I'm going to make a dotted small texture. I'm going to figure that out. Uh, let's see. That's your chalk right there. There's one more thing that the uh, that the plugin comes with, actually. The, the, this stuff I built on my own. The chalk stuff I built completely on my own. It's using a render target, which is really complex tech. Actually, it's not that complex, but uh, for somebody who's never done Unreal, it'll probably be complex. Mm. So I'm using a render tag. I was using a render target to drive that, which is basically I'm just updating the material based on where your cursor it is. But this is something that came in VR in in the VR exp expansion plugin, right? This this guy this guy called Modern Troll. So this plus that gripping the objects thing, these two have made my life easy, so I don't have to rebuild grip. So check this out, okay? This is climbing. I can climb on this. Woo! -hoo! You see? It's like a hinge-like effect. I I haven't read the documentation, so I don't know exactly how this works, but implementing this took like 25, 30 minutes. Uh, so I know from the code, but I don't know how it works on the C++ side, but it's interesting. I don't know how often you guys will climb in my game, but I thought it'd be good. Then there's this other marshmallow type object. 
I'll pick up. So as you can see, multi grips. You can grip with two hands. You can grip with one hand. You can grip, and if you leave it, gravity takes effect. Uh, I put no collision on this, so you can just walk through. So imagine, right? Like you and your friends sitting together, each with your own recycle bin, basket, whatever, picking up stuff from a grocery store, going to check out in virtual reality. Somebody, I mean, I don't think we're going to find a, va a vaccination for coronavirus, right? It's not coming soon. I mean, most people think it'll take at least two to three years. Some people think it'll take five years. And coronaviruses are notorious for, for coming back in the sense your immunity, your IgG lasts anywhere between two, two months to a year. And then after a year, you're susceptible to reinfection again. So I don't really think that this is going away anytime soon. I think people either forget coronavirus and just do their thing with masks or they'll enter the metaverse. Now, there are a lot more things I need to do. I need to make sure there's positional audio. I need to make sure there's lip sync. I need to move the mouth. There's no mouth on this character, but I'm going to have a character with mouth and teeth. I'm going to make sure that syncs with whatever I'm saying. Just, it's very easy. If there's microphone input, open the mouth. If there's no microphone input, don't open the mouth um, or something along those lines. I have to see what, if it looks realistic. Uh, then there's positional audio. If I'm standing right next to you, then if I'm talking, then then you should be able to talk back to me. And if I'm away from you, or, or rather hear me, and if I'm away from you, you should be able to hear me, but softer. So since we're using something called Spatial OS for the multiplayer side of things, Spatial OS is a Series B-funded, SoftBank-funded company that's, well, usually needs server, and in VR chat, for example, you have about 30 players, right? You can have 30 players because you need to calculate a lot of data, and one server can handle up to 30 players. But with Spatial OS, you can have a thousand players a server, right? Uh, it, it basically concatenates a lot of servers, amalgamates, concatenates whatever word you want to use. It basically puts them together, and each person is in his own kind of zone, but his inputs and outputs can be seen and heard. They're replicated to other actors, to other people around. So very interesting to see what that happens. In fact, this game has been built multiplayer first, which is why I'm not using particles to generate that. I'm using a render target because particles don't work really well in multiplayer. They lag the shit out of everybody. You should not do particle server side. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the more we do this, the more I'm going to show you how the real world itself is exactly like, like virtual reality. And as you can see, everything here is low res, right? That's because I'm running it at low res because um, it's, it's just I'm running a test build. I'm not... I haven't cooked the game, but when I cook the game, this is going to look even better. My wife's, in fact, working on some fantastic levels, some outdoors, some, you know, you can actually run in the wind with your friends. You can do a lot of things in this game. You can actually, well, let's see, you can pick this up, and if this was a bat, this is a bat, I have to obviously change the constraints on this. You can actually play cricket with this, right? Somebody can bowl, and you can hit it, and it will follow physics. Uh... I need to make sure this animation is done a little better. This is the only animation that I'm really not happy with. The rest of the animations are, you know, they're the best you can get for just three points. But what, as I was saying, the real world in this, they are eerily similar. And over more episodes of V time, hopefully, we are able to, we're really able to uh, explore the similarities between real world and virtual reality. And as usual, if you're part of the Avalon Army, you know we're at the edge first. Um, and also, we are obviously hiring uh, as many devs, game devs, as we possibly can get our hands on, as many art guys. And I see a lot of you guys are using the Meta app, the Not VR app. And, you know, the stats on the Not VR app are phenomenal. I think in the last three days, we've got like 60 or 70,000 logins on the app, which is... Right? So, so yeah, that's, that's crazy. Uh, but... But that's not the final goal. I think the text-based apps, I think their time is over because this is real, really, this is the Facebook of this generation. Whereas the app that I've, we've built, it works and all that, but it's still, it's still late to the market uh, in terms of being an app, in terms of the form that it's presented. So either way, more in VR next time. Next time we'll, I want to talk a little bit about how I think our brains rate limit time, um, how we see the universe going at a particular speed and if we made our brains faster, we'd see the universe go slower. So everything around us in the real world would go slower. And I can show you that in VR. So catch you the next time. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. See you. Seriously. Get out.